Hello everyone and uh, welcome to another awesome stream and this time uh, it's on Teleport. Uh, so my name is Sayam Padhak and I'm a CNCF ambassador working as director of technical evangelism at SIBO. Uh, so uh, welcome you all to another uh, awesome stream on Teleport. So uh, we'll be learning all about Teleport, what Teleport is, is SIBO, what uh, are its so, use cases. Uh, welcome you all. And, uh, We'll see how Teleport would be working for Kubernetes, and uh, we'll see a demo as well. Uh, also, uh, Trent will be walking us through the roadmap and how the community can get involved, which is very important. Uh, so uh, very, very excited for this particular stream. I have used Teleport personally, and it's it's really awesome for, for you know, a lot of reasons for, uh, I have written a couple of blogs as well on, on Teleport uh, using the secure uh, database access, which was recently launched the, in the last version. So that was also very, very neat. So a lot of features uh, coming up with Teleport. I'm really excited for this particular stream. And today I'm joined by uh, Trent from Teleport, uh, who will be demonstrating everything and telling us all about Teleport. Very excited to have him. Uh, uh, I know it's late for him, but still uh, glad to have him on the show. So uh, thank you, Trent, for joining and giving your time uh, to talk about Teleport. Please introduce yourself to the community. No worries. Hi, everyone. Um, so my name is Trent Clark. I'm a software engineer at Teleport. I'm a relatively new teleporter. I've been there for about four months, um, and it's been a really interesting learning experience for me there. I've learned a lot of stuff that uh, I haven't been able to do in the past, which has been great, um, but it also gives me a good perspective on starting to use teleport. Um, so I think, um, um, so yeah, we uh, should probably sort of crack on. Yep, uh, so we have a lot of folks joining. Uh... So hello everyone. We're glad to have you, uh, you all. Uh, and yes, there are a couple of swags as well that would be given away yep. by Teleport uh, that I can choose. So usually I do that with the Google form, but today I decided uh, we'll just randomly pick the most interactive person in the chat. Uh, so we'll choose a couple of them who are most interactive. Please make sure you tweet out on Twitter as well uh, what you are learning from the stream. A very very good project uh, product and. Uh, uh, at, I mean, we are also working it uh, towards, you know, uh, having the integration of Teleport with SIBO as well. So yes, I'll be working closely with the, with the Teleport team. And I have been working closely with the Teleport team. And uh, I, I wrote a blog, uh, I told you like on Teleport database access made easy. And if uh, you want to learn more about that, there is a link to that as well. So without uh, wasting any further time, uh, we have a lot to cover today, basically. So we can get started. So basically, Trent, uh, what what is actually Teleport? Because the first question that, that could be answered is, you know, what Teleport is? <laughs> it's the, the obvious question. Um, mm -hmm. So Teleport is essentially a system that tries to make governing access to systems easy and tries to keep out of your way and just let you get on with doing your job, uh, but still provide a high level of security uh, in using best practices for uh, for, um, uh, for gating access to things. So, um, uh, so that that's the, the the crux of what Teleport is and wants to remain. Um, and then, sort of layered on top of that, there's a whole bunch of other sort of very interesting things that having that kind of um, infrastructure allows you to have, like auditing and um, uh, session recording and playback and a whole bunch of other things that you get not for free but I mean not 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 with no effort uh, from uh, teleports perspective but from having that infrastructure you've got this whole bunch of things that you can now allow which is really really nice um, so people use teleport for just doing the security stuff people use teleport for having a single place where that they can have all of the access for all of their resources and systems um, uh, in one place and managed in the same way. People use Teleport to help them provide um, proof for their auditing or uh, regulatory uh, requirements that people have um, for security. So there's a whole bunch of things that people use Teleport for, but uh, at its at its crux, the the the, the um, the core of the product is essentially just uh, what the, the phrase that we use is um, access that doesn't get in your way. Um, and so, yeah, the, the, that's the crux of the product. Um, yeah, yeah interesting. so uh, basically, you, you mean to say like teleport is a kind of secure way of accessing your 
complete infrastructure. So, and, yes. and in complete infrastructure, you can you will be having your servers. You can have the application level. Obviously, now it's mm -hmm. a cloud native ecosystem, so you are having Kubernetes. And obviously, we know that Teleport works on Kubernetes as well, and it has a lot of features uh, from uh, uh, with respect to Kubernetes. So, uh, so that's what it is, right? You have a lot of yep. access uh, level when you say the infrastructure complete layer can be, uh, you know, le can leverage the power of uh, Teleport. Yes, exactly. Um, so, yeah, we uh, it initially started off as essentially uh, providing access to servers via SSH, and so providing, like, basically delivering all of the best practice things that you can do for securing SSH. Um, like Debbie, it's essentially got a jump server built into it and a few other, and um, uses short-lived certificates for uh, access control. Um, and then once you had that sort of infrastructure sort of built out to databases, to Kubernetes, to the web um, uh, app, app uh, access tools that we've got as well, um, and there are, there are a few other sort of um, protocols on the horizon that we're looking at um, doing as well. Um, so I can give you a sort of a much more in-depth overview of how Teleport does its job. Uh, if I th throw some slides up, if you just give me a second to get that ready. Yep. Uh, where are we? I will just try and share my screen. Um, so has everyone got, have you got that? Yep. Yep, okay, so um, this is the basic architecture of Teleport. Um, so you see in the middle there, we've got this uh, Teleport proxy and Teleport auth. Um, so that's the, the, so the, the two major components that work together. Um, proxy is essentially your jump server. It's your interface to the outside world for your Teleport cluster. Uh, teleport um, auth is essentially the brains of the outfit. So it's the thing that has um, all of the rules and access controls and things like that built, uh, uh, configured inside it to decide who gets access to what. That can plug into not just, we've got it for small install installations and de debug installations and demo installations like I'm going to do tonight. Uh, we've got a built-in user database, but it can talk to sort of um, talk to any of a number of identity managers for single sign-on. So you've got, um, it can do anything uh, that has SAML, uh, it can do um, uh, Active Directory, you can do any, you know, a whole bunch of other identities that you can, uh, providers that you can plug into it. Um, I think that might be restricted to the enterprise version, I'm not sure uh, at this point. But um, from the other side, um, you don't, um, when you're building out your teleport cluster and putting all of your um, uh, things into teleport, it doesn't have to live on the same network. Uh, the teleport agent that runs on the node machine, so anything else that you want to put in a, in a teleport cluster, we refer to as a node. Um, and there's a little service running on that that provides either the SSH or the Kubernetes or the database access or whatever. That can also tunnel back in through uh, sort of the public network to get and the proxy to get back to the auth server. And so that you can have things either living sort of natted behind your own uh, cluster or live somewhere else on the internet and have that all managed from that one central uh, auth location. Uh, any questions so far? Yeah, uh, there are a couple like, uh, let me read from the beginning. Uh, is this an alternative for DEX as an OIDC provider? Um, I'm not sure. I, we, we okay. don't, we are not our own identity provider. Um, mm -hmm. We interface with others, but we do not forward that service onto other applications. Mm -hmm. um, and there's one more, like, uh, uh, is there any limitation on the open source release? Yeah, I think there, is, there, is, there are some features which are limited to the enterprise version. Correct. Um, until uh, the latest release of Teleport, the role-based um, access controls that we've got were limited to the enterprise one, but they have been open sourced in the last revision. 
Yep. Um, there's, I think, a lot of the uh, sort of more sorry, enterprise level features of basically interfacing with larger systems are more specific to the enterprise version. But I'm, I don't actually have a feature matrix of this is in this version, that's that version with me, unfortunately. Um, mm. But uh, yeah, generally speaking, if it's a, an interface with a larger system, usually identity, but the identity systems, that's enterprise plan. Of course, there's support and things like that that get bundled along with the enterprise version. The open source version is a totally usable tool by itself, though, um, for a lot of applications. Cool. Um, all right. So how does teleport work? Um, so you as a user want access to a piece of a, a a given resource. Um, so you want to say you want to SSH into something. Um, you will then log into the cluster with our little uh, TSH tool. Pardon me. Um, and then what would happen then is Teleport will check all of its appropriate uh, access rules and it will give you a short-lived certificate in return. Now we use certificates instead of keys for a couple of reasons. Uh, the biggest one is that you can time limit certificates. So if certificate leaks, you know, too bad it was only open, it was only uh, eligible for, um, only valid for six hours or two hours or half an hour or whatever you set. Um, so it's not um, the end of the world if that goes away, whereas uh, replacing uh, like SSH keys and stuff can be you know, a, little, a lot more uh, tricky. Um, and using certificates, we also get to embed a lot of interesting stuff in the essentially the key we have, essentially the um, the token we give you. And that a lot of that, um, uh, a lot of our security is based on checking those countersigned um, certificates against our, our um, database. Um, and yeah, so basically we, act as a um, authentication provider for kubectl. Um, so that's how that works. We have um, some, I'm not entirely sure how the database access works under the hood. I haven't actually been in that area of the code, um, but by and large, you will, whatever service you access, you will be get given a short-lived certificate and that's your, that's your um, entry pass essentially. Um, Cool. Um, one thing that doesn't show here is um, the ni a nice thing that also um, uh, issuing and um, revoking these short-lived certificates gives you is that you can change people's rights on the fly with, and they will sort of naturally expire. Um, so one of the things I wanted to show uh, tonight was this uh, access workflow that we've got that we've open sourced in the latest version of Teleport. Um, so what happens there is that you are able to treat a request for a particular resource or a particular access role in the same way that you might treat like a, a pull request or something like that for code, uh, in that you can give your, the, your users the minimal rule, uh, role set that they need to do their day jobs but it's no big deal to give them extra permissions when they need it for an emergency, for argument's sake. Um, is that, does that making sense so far? Absolutely. So basically we have, uh, you know, uh, we have a user who wants to uh, log in and then we have mm. either the TSH, uh, which is the, which is for teleport. And obviously we have uh, the kubectl. So you will be getting the short lived certificates from the teleport proxy, which are easy and it is, it is token based short lived so that even if it gets leaked, so you, you don't have to worry about that. And mm. then you can, uh, you'll be able to do the secure login to the, uh, either the Kubernetes clusters or to the infrastructure yep. as well, or to the data databases uh, which are there uh, in the previous release that they was introduced like that you can access you know you can set up your own mysql uh, server like i have uh, posted the link in the chat as well so you'll be yep. uh, setting up the um, whole teleport system and then you'll install the yep. uh, mysql and then you'll be able to access that securely via teleport so that can be done easily using the open source version and like uh trent said uh, trent said uh, we have the rbac which was not part of the uh open source version previously but now it comes uh, uh handy with uh, the 
uh, teleport as well. So you will be having the R back yes. functionality with uh, uh, with teleport, which is actually very good. Uh, so it gives you much more flexibility and it gives you much more power uh, while using the open source version of teleport. Yeah. Again, I'll only be scratching the surface of that stuff that stuff tonight because it's just it is a big topic. Um, there is a lots and lots of different stuff that you can do with the role based in, uh, uh, the role templates that we have. They've got like variable interpolation and things like that that can happen and expression matching and thing, regular expression matching and all sorts of stuff where you can so you can have very, very flexible roles. Um, yeah. But I will be doing a very simple at other end of the scale <laughs> lightweight version of that tonight. <laughs> Sure. Um, uh, so we already have like a raw code in the chat. I love teleport because I know he uses that for cluster D as well and uh, and a lot of things. So it's it's very interesting to see a lot of use cases that people use teleport for. So that's why uh, it's important to understand that uh, you know how it actually works, which we have already yeah. shown. There's um, a great actually a great page of it. The testimonials page on our website is just everyone's using it for different things um, all over the place, and you just sort of going oh. I wouldn't have thought of that, but obviously it makes sense to use it for that. Um, <laughs> um, so yeah. Um, so I might just dive straight into doing a bit of a demonstration. I've got a bit of a backstory. So I'm telling a story about some uh, poor developer that uh, is having a bad day in this demonstration. So um, absolutely. I'll just, Let's get I'll just share my screen again. Um, I might do the whole screen this time. Pardon me, I'm just about to. Okay, so have we got the demo screen up, the demo uh, slide there? Yep. Okay, so some backstory. We have a Kubernetes cluster. I'm just going to be using a mini cube on my machine. Um, so that again, uh, illustrating how these um, uh, clusters can be can access things from anywhere. The actual auth server and proxy that I am going to be talking to are just a standalone um, instances on AWS. And I've got an instance of Minikube running on my machine here locally. Um, and it is going to be governed by the um, access to that. It's going to be governed by um, that instance that's running on AWS. So we've got uh, Kubernetes cluster. It's got two namespaces. It's access, no pods beyond um, uh, teleport running inside it at the moment. But for our purposes, we have two, uh, two namespaces, dev and staging. Um, we have two sets of roles with access based on uh, access to the namespaces based on that. So we've got, um, um, then we have two teleport roles. This is our teleport configuration. This is uh, our role configuration uh, YAML. You can see that we've got two roles here. Um, I don't know if you can see my cursor or not. Um, oops, let's go back. Um, don't know if you can see my cursor or not, but we've got two roles here. One is K8 dev and one is K8 staging. Again, these map back to the groups in the Kubernetes cluster. Um, and you can see on the um, left-hand side, we've got our dev. Uh, and this is the sort of spec. You can have multiple allow and deny specs and things like that for a, uh, for a role. But um, um, so we're saying that we, uh, this uh, developer role is allowed to use um, things that have the um, developer on call uh, uh, Kubernetes group. Um, it also says it's allowed, this roller is also allowed to request the K8 staging role. So not only are you allowed, you're specifying what your um, uh, users are allowed to access, you're also specifying what they're allowed to ask for as well. Um, so you'll see here we deny um, the request to the admin role for argument's sake. The admin role is um, the the super user of teleport, basically. Um, so it's the most unrestricted user that can do anything if they own the cluster, basically. Um, and so, yeah, your humble developer is not allowed to ask for that role. It's just you, you, you can't ask for it, so you can't be granted it. 
On the right hand side, we've got the staging role. Um, and that says, uh, if you see here, it's, um, it's got an option that says, all right, you can have anyone who has this uh, is only signed into it for an hour at a time before the um, certificates have to be reissued, meaning that if I revoke you, you've got a maximum of an hour before, this, the, uh, before you'll be chucked out. Um, uh, you've got allows access to these Kubernetes groups, so it's a staging set. And again, someone who accesses this staging role is not allowed to promote themselves up to the admin role. And this is, again, a very, very simple example of what the teleport RBAC um, system looks like. It is, you know, arbitrarily, um, you know, probably not arbitrarily complex, but it's, uh, it's, you can get, this is the very low, simple, straightforward end. Whereas once you start dealing with templates and interpolation and pulling values from your SSO provider to inject into roles and things like that, that's the other end. That's the really um, more complex and much smarter end. But for the sake of a demonstration, these are, these are what we've got. Now let's look at our poor developer. Um, uh, you know, this is our developer. He's having a ba he looks a bit like me. He doesn't always know what he's doing, which is also a bit like me. He's prone to panic and he's having a bad day. So something's gone wrong in the staging server and they don't know what to do. Um, and so his first, uh, where are we? His first instance, his first um, first instinct is to give me everything so I, will, I, can, I can fix it. I want to fix everything. And so he says, TSH, uh, login, user beaker, so that's who he is. Um, I'll, I'll jump in and see what I can do. Oh, gosh, what have I done here? Uh, let's, let's just... What a way to start a demo, eh? All right, let's just go all the way back. Okay, so, so our proxy is at proc. It's how you know what's real is when I make, get things wrong. Teleport.example.com uh, user beaker. Okay, so uh, this is. This, um, this demonstration is using our internal uh, database of users, so we're not getting um, spun out to GitHub or to our SSO provider or anything like that. We're just gonna use that. So I'll type in our password. Hope I got it right. We do have two-factor authentication, so it's asking for YubiKey access here. So I'm just pressing the button on that now. Uh, Trent, can you, can you increase the font size? Uh, I'm, I'm not sure. <laughs> hmm. uh, let's see, where's the preferences gone? If anyone's got any tips on how to do that, um, any tips, anyone? <laughs> Maybe you can I, just uh, try the, the control plus and see yeah, if that works. No. Oh, there we go. Is it, yeah. that better yeah. for everyone? Yeah, uh, a, a bit more you can increase and then you can drag the screen so that uh, it doesn't fit. It, it, it works fine. Yeah, All right. perfect. All right. That's perfect. See what I say? Yeah. what I was saying about the developer who doesn't always quite know what he's doing. Anyway, so you see here, we've been logged in as Beaker. Uh, Beaker has um, the K8 dev role. He's allowed to log in as Trent on uh, an SSH server or something like that. Um, he's allowed to go, in, he's currently logged into the Minikube cluster and he has those dev, um, dev roles. Okay, now where's my cheat sheet? Uh, um, okay, so I say I want to log into the cube cluster. 
TSH cube log in. And I want to log into mini cube. Yay. So, all right. I am now log. Uh, it's basically that's just saying to teleport. This is the configuration I want to use. This is where I want to go. Uh, this is the cluster I want to interact with right now. Um, all right, so let's have a look at staging and see what's going on. Uh, I don't even know anything about staging, so let's just cube get my, excuse me while I check my cheat sheet and I didn't write this down, of course I didn't. Okay, pods. All right, not allowed to do namespace. Uh, let's try and dev because we know I'm allowed that. No, nope, we don't have any pods in there, but at least that shows you that I've got a response from dev. But the problem's in staging. So let's oh, learn to type. Let's go to staging. Oh, no, I can't get staging either, says Beaker. All right. I know what to do. I will expand my role set to get a, um, a new, more permissions. So what I will do is go back to the beaker and request. All right, make me the super user. Uh, so that is the question is saying that the developer is saying, right, I want to be the super user. That way I can get access to, um, that way I can get access to the staging namespace. Not allowed to do it. Beaker cannot request the admin role. Okay. Beaker says, right, I will set my sites a little bit lower and go for the K8 staging role. So what this is doing now is it sent a request off to the teleport auth server. And now I will, now, for the sake of this demo, I haven't set up any integrations with this, but I'll tell a story, I'll tell a bit more of a story about how these integrations can be delivered after we've done this initial demo. Um, anyway, so assuming that I am, okay, so I'm task swapping a bit here. Now, imagine me as being the administrator and I have been the, the, the cluster administrator, I've been, um, notified that somebody wants a request. And I'll talk about those notifications later on. But um, so how do I how do I deal with that? Um, uh, again, apologies for doing the pseudo. This is not how we would do it in a real life scenario. But um, again, for the sake of this, it's think so pseudo. Uh, so you use T. I can never type T cuddle right the first time. Uh, total uh, requests. Okay, let's just try making that. Okay, so we can see here, there's an outdated one here from before, but um, you can see here, this is our, this is our um, request list that an administrator has been presented with. And so you can see here, it's Beaker asking for K8 staging. Uh, this is the, the time it was created and this is the status. So it's still pending. We haven't answered yet. Um, and because Beaker has just randomly asked the admin for this particular right, I don't know about anyone else, but as an admin, I would be deeply suspicious of someone just shouting at me to give me that role. So what I'm going to do is deny Beaker's request. And so if we tab back to poor Beaker, Beaker's approval request has come through saying denied. I still cannot get the staging, access to the staging uh, namespace. And so Beaker has calmed down a bit by now. 
And so he can now say, So I'll try again with actually providing a, a reason for why that one, uh, why that access, why that access request is necessary. Now we'll go back and list the requests here, and you'll see again we've got our list of the latest request, the request reason it's all gone wrong. The previous denied request is still there, so all of this, all of these events are getting audited, and I'll show you these events happening in the audit log again in a second on the um, Teleport web UI. So this time, and assuming that um, Beak has provided a reasonable reason for that, we will approve that request. And so you see here, you got this log of all the requests that have happened and, you know. All right, so tab back to Beaker. Hopefully, finally, Beaker has access to the teleport, to the um, uh, staging namespace. And assuming that there were actual pods doing actual things in the staging namespace, you could then go and do what you need to do in there. Um, and you'll see here, um, we now have the staging roles. And it's only valid for another 59 minutes. So as soon as that timeout expires, Biku will have to uh, expand that um, uh, yeah, the, as soon as they, as that time at, when that time out expires, those rights will automatically be revoked. You don't have to go back and do anything. Um, they will just disappear from Beaker unless Beaker asks for them again. Um, so that's a whole bunch of administration stuff that you just don't have to deal with um, for temporary um, esca uh, privilege escalations and things like that. Um, so what I'll do now, if you'll bear with me for just a second, um, I will log in as an admin. Yep, and I think that was really a cool storyline demo, of, uh, Trent, because it's, uh, you know, sometimes you do require the access and sometimes you do have to be suspicious on what the request is coming uh, uh, for. So the, the yep. reasoning is, is, is nice and, and it was like, it was good for having giving the access to do a particular job, maybe for one hour or thirty minutes and things like that. So that was interesting. Yeah, yeah. There's uh, and there's again a whole bunch of other things that you can um, uh, you can the, the whole bunch of switches you can fiddle for the different roles and the, the TTLs and I mean, I mean you can imagine a situation where the user does not know the role that they need. Um, so you can imagine like, you know, poor Beaker is panicking and can't think, oh, I need the K8 staging um, role. Um, it's possible for the administrator to not only deny the request, he, the d administrator could also say, I approve it, but you're getting these roles instead. Um, so if the request is too overarching like that. You don't necessarily have to arbitrarily deny it. You can talk to them and go, right, well, in that case, you actually want role X, Y, and Z, not super user, um, and override the request. Um, so there's a whole bunch of other things around that that you can do. Um, if we look at the activity log, um, so we've got an audit log here. Um, so if you scroll down, um, so this is me making that request. Here are the requests in the audit log. Um, so all of this stuff in the audit log are essentially JSON logs um, that can be exported to any sort of um, uh, system information database or processor that you can, can, you can scan and do stuff. Too, so that they are sort of well structured. So you can see here, um, 
here is me approving my request. Um, so it's saying cluster, the cluster was example, this is the event code, someone has requested and uh, done an update on an access request, uh, st the state is now approved, um, and this user, this is essentially the built-in uh, cluster user. Because I wasn't acting as an admin per se, I was acting as though I was teleport itself. Um, it was, it's been approved by this um, built-in user. If I was acting as a, a normal uh, separate user, uh, which for various reasons for the way I've set this demo up is difficult for me to do right now, but in real life, that's what you would be doing. That would show exactly who update, who approved it and with what other details you've got as well. Um, so we don't have any active sessions on. Um, so that's that's sort of the audit log there. And so you have this, everything is logged. Um, if I go back to the seven day range and write, um, Uh, no, what have I done? Anyway, I'm just trying to find the, um, uh, so yeah, this is me um, setting up that demo, all of these audit things. So I've got a log in case I've done something terribly wrong of all of the things, all of the changes I've made. So if you look here, um, so one of the first ones, uh, so that's me querying the list of pods as uh, Kermit, which is the admin user. Um, there's here is me, uh, yeah, uh, adding a adding one of those those dev roles. Um, and things like that. So yeah, you can see. Even me just setting up this demonstration, there is an audit trail of all the things that I did to make that demo happen. Um, so I can't get away with anything. Um, cool, okay, so that's the, the remote, uh, the sort of the role-based access controls in a nutshell. Again, just scratching the surface of that because it is a very uh, broad topic. Um, one other thing that might be nice to see is while I'm here, sorry, is uh, let's log out as, um, let's log out from um, um, as Beaker. Let's, be, let's become our admin. Um, TSH. Uh, is to example, oops. This would be easier if I could type. TSA uh, login user commit. Oh. Okay. Again, two-factor authentication. So I've got a little YubiKey flashing and everything there. Uh, where would my cheat sheet go? Because that was quite cool. Oh no, both halves of that, don't I? Oops. Okay, so this is me logged into the pod that is running Teleport. So this is the Teleport node that has the uh, uh, Kubernetes agent um, that talks to the um, Kubernetes cluster. Um, so there are several ways of running uh, Teleport within or with Kubernetes. One, you can have the whole cluster, Teleport cluster inside a Kubernetes cluster. You can inject or you can inject the, the um, 
the excuse me, um, the teleport node into the Kubernetes cluster, which is what I've done here, just using a Helm chart that I'll get to soon. Uh, or you can have it sit completely outside and just talk to it um, outside uh, using the, the uh, underlying networking um, uh, structures there. So it, again, there's a whole host of ways you can do this stuff um, to warp into whatever your business needs are or your organization needs are or your, the existing strategy that you have. Um, so uh, let's just have a look here. So this is what we have. But what I can do now is go back over to our admin session and then look. And of course, it's not going to show it to me, is it? Oh. All right. Um, so what I will do is all right. So this is just imagine you're doing some administrative work, or you know, I'm, I'm, I know that it's you know generally not considered a good idea to SSL to um, remote into a, a running pod. It should be uh, you know. Um, ephemeral and ephemeral and immutable but for the sake of argument sometimes you just have to um, anyway so this is us doing doing that um, and now if I look in our session recordings you will see here a recording of that thing that I just did so And so we have, again, so we process all of the ordered events that happen and generate this recording for sessions um, uh, once a record. So you can go back and actually look at what people were doing, how they were doing it, who it was that did stuff. Um, it's one of, the prob one of the things I always, absolutely hated in my very brief system <laughs> administration career was having to have set up multiple logins on servers and things like that. So you would have a separate log, you have, it, um, you have like one, say you're on Ubuntu on AWS, um, you have like the Ubuntu login there and who did what? We don't know, you have to set up multiple logins to do it. No, you don't, you can go through teleport and teleport will tell you who was using the machine at that time. Uh, what they did, where they were from, what their rights were at the time. Um, and here is the actual line by line set of commands that they entered and what the response was. Um, so I might go back to the screen and stop sharing and come back to the row. The inception mode. Yep. <laughs> Spot the amateur live streamer. <laughs> so I um, think so it, yeah, that's really, yeah, it, it was really uh, nice, uh, Trent. The, the all the demos and the features that you have, you know, uh, just uh, uh, demoed, especially the uh, the last fancy part, which was the session recording. So I think that's that's pretty mm. cool. I mean, uh, there can be plenty of use cases that can be, uh, you know, uh, that can be thought of with this particular uh, scenario itself. Oh, it can no. be used for yeah. You can you can use it for a lot of things. So I think yeah. session recording is something which is which is really cool, and uh, uh, obviously the R back. So yeah, I was sorry, going to say, with the session recording and stuff, I don't think we have it for all the services. We don't think it's coming for database, but I'm not sure. Um, so that you could actually see this, like if someone is, like the database access that we've we've got in uh, Teleport is mainly for doing sort of admin tasks and things like that. It's not necessarily something that's there for, this is your live production environment doing that. Um, so yeah. you can see, um, you could, you, the idea is that you'll be able to see what someone, what, like the actual SQL that someone has typed in. And, uh, you know, this is why our database doesn't exist anymore is because someone typed this in. <laughs> yeah, that is very um, interesting. So, uh, 
Trent, there is also a, a very cool feature. Can you talk about that uh, also, uh, like the uh, session sharing? So we can, we can oh, yeah. share the session as well. I think that is also a very powerful feature. I have seen that in yeah. action. So I just wanted to let the community know, like, this is there. So, you know, so that uh, we can get excited. Yeah. I was like, you know, imagine, you know, pair programming, but SSH. Um, it's when you are using uh, teleport for i've done this personally for server access with ssh i have not done it personally for kubernetes access but I, so i don't know whether it's 100 percent there or not but for the server access you can log in um, to uh, a server through teleport uh, over ssh start typing stuff and then go oh i don't know what that is and some, and then, or don't know what the command for this is, or what that secret is, or anything like that. And somebody else can join you in that session. So um, I think uh, I don't know if you remember seeing in that web UI that each session has this gigantic GUID as a as a unique identifier. If you have that identifier and the appropriate rights, you can log in, and both of you. Uh, you can join an existing session so that you can do both things. So you know, it's like the um, the yeah. You know, I kind of think of it like you know when you pass someone your keyboard and say type your password in. <laughs> um, you know, it's like that, but audited and uh, over the internet. <laughs> that's that's really quite a cool feature. Yeah, um, absolutely. That that's really a superb feature as well. So I think uh, we have covered, you know, almost uh, most of the features uh, for for teleport. Uh, mm. So do we you, have. Uh, uh, yeah, tell me. So go, no, you go ahead. So I was thinking, like, we can have a, a, like sort of a roadmap, like where teleport is actually headed to. That would be interesting to hear as well. Ah, uh, okay. Um, a lot of the work we're doing at the moment is. Um, <laughs> Uh, accessibility, uh, like user accessibility. So um, making it easier to use, easier to install, easier to get that first node up and running. Um, we've had quite a bit of feedback that it's a great product, but configuration needs work. Um, and we take that to heart because we want people to be able to use this, not only um, because we want people to buy the services, but we we also want people to have secure setups and stuff. So we don't, you know, so it's easy for people to do the right thing. Um, so there's a lot of work going into that at the moment. Um, we're working on Windows access at the moment too, which is very skunkworksy level um, uh, things so, but it's stay tuned. It's coming. So, like remote desktop access with recordings and so forth, like that. Um, and just, uh, lots of. I think we're trying to also uh, expand the range of databases we support, but don't quote me on that. Um, so yeah, there's a lot of activity going on. Um, we're revamping a lot of the recording stuff as well to provide um, uh, a much more searchable and um, uh, analytics amenable uh, recording format so that we can import it into um, uh, an make it much much easier to import a recording into an analytics tool and just go right what happened exactly what's the why is this traffic like this why are these requests like that um, and so we're revamping a lot of that to make it much easier to run analytics over it. Um, so yeah, there's a lot in the pipeline. Um, awesome. There's um, yeah, uh, I, I could go on and on, um, <laughs> but uh, yeah, you probably don't know want to know about you know me fixing typos in documentation. So it's <laughs> <laughs> so basically, if anybody wants to get started with Teleport, uh, which is the best place? Like the documentation is is the right. Uh, yeah. So there's the. Admin manual is a really good place to start. There's a we've got a YouTube channel um, uh, with a lot of introductory documentation um, and examples. There's a um, uh, I won't demo it um, tonight, but I will show you my um, cheat sheet of how I set up installed Teleport on in into Minikube to um, 
to, um, to for this demo tonight, uh, which is all based on um, documentation that we have. Our GitHub, uh, gra GitHub um, gravitational slash teleport um, is um, you know, people can go if they're interested in contributing. Um, we do have a, a bunch of um, open issues that people can contribute and a lot of stuff that's marked with good good um, early issue. It's all open source apart from the little um, enterprise bit. Um, so, you know, there's a lot of good work going on there in the community as well. And we get a lot of our um, sort of the, the skeletons of features and stuff from either bug fixes that are submitted by the community or um, uh, feature ideas that way too. So um, yeah, it's a very active, very active and very um, interesting community community to be part of. Yep, uh, so I think that's, that's pretty interesting because uh, uh, I mean, um, it is very important. The contribution aspect is very important and uh, I have posted all the links. Uh, first, the Kubernetes getting started uh, in the goterepo.com slash doc slash Kubernetes access. So I think that is pretty uh, neat. You, there is a video as well attached in the documentation mm -hmm. that walks you through how to do that. And also the gravitational teleport GitHub link I have shared. So you can go over the issues, you can go over uh, some of the uh, bug fixes, raise the bug fixes, raise the issues, and also fix them yep. if, if you are uh, if you yeah. want. So that is our, uh, our, our support team is pretty good, very good. Um, our um, if you're interested in um actually trying it at an enterprise level and might end up somewhere with a with a, a, a sort of an enterprise agreement with stuff our customer success and um <coughs> excuse me our customer success and success, customer success is hard to say sometimes um <laughs> uh and our sales team and stuff are really really good people um i, I I would say that even if they weren't paying me. Um, uh, so yeah, it's a really good bunch of people to work for and with, um, and um, it's uh, I think it's a good product. Even you know, if, even if I say so myself. Not no, I, absolutely. You know. So it's it's really good product, and uh, it has a lot of features. Uh, I mean, uh, yeah, though there are there is an open source and the enterprise offering, but I think the open source offering is generous enough features, uh, and there are a lot of you know uh, great features for the open source offerings as well. As uh, Trent has demoed uh, a quite a small bit of those features, there are a lot more as well that you can you know uh, go through the documentation and see, and even the databases yeah. thing is is really cool. Uh, you can securely access the databases uh, from Teleport. So uh, I have written a blog on that. You can check that out and even try that out and see how that works yourself. Yeah. And uh, your your Kubernetes installation is pretty simple. You have your Helm chart uh, that you can you know install. I and can, you have your... I can show you the three commands I used to set up thing. If you want me to um, just share again for a second, if I can just yep. take sure. the screen for a minute. Uh, where are we? There we go. Um, so yeah, Minikube. Um, just started up a blank Minikube. Um, so this tcuddle tokens, oops. Tcuddle tokens, um, that basically gives you uh, essentially an invitation token. Um, and it's only uh, saying that this is only valid to add uh, Kubernetes nodes and it, it will expire in 24 hours. And the Helm, uh, the Helm installation command, and so basically saying this is the proxy to point to, the entry point to our cluster. Um, its cluster name is Minikube, um, and you, you know already. This is just you wouldn't do this in real life. Um, this is me setting up a demo on the fly, and not getting my TLS correct. So ignore that. And this is the authorization token that was generated by. Um, that uh, uh, tea cuddle tokens, and that was it. Um, I did have to fiddle with some of the um, teleport roles. Uh, I had to add the um, system masters group to the admin role to get a few other things working, but that's all covered in the teleport documentation. So those are the literally the three commands I ran to get a teleport cluster uh, uh, Kubernetes cluster managed by teleport. 
Yep. Uh, so that's how simple it is to set up. Uh, so I think it's pretty neat. You have a help chart and the, and just you can set set teleport up. And there is an extensive uh, user guide as well. And there are a lot of uh, uh, tutorials related to that, like what you can actually do. A lot of learn guides, like you can have multiple clusters uh, within a single teleport, and you can have your uh, you know uh, federation CI/CD. So all these things are there, which which are also very useful, uh, which you can actually use some of the use case, see some of the use cases, and then you can obviously create your own like the session uh, yeah. session sharing, which is another difficult word to uh, say together. <laughs> um, yeah, the, another thing I haven't touched on is things like federated um, um, uh, trust and things like that. So it's possible to have multiple teleport clusters that all delegate their um, their trust to a, 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 a trusted root cluster so that you can have, you can subdivide things more um, uh atomically if you need to um yeah there's a whole bunch of things i haven't touched on tonight um that uh it's all yeah cool stuff yep so make sure you check out uh teleport and uh, uh, let us know uh on on twitter like what all things have you uh, you know learned from the stream and uh, will you try it and how will you try it how you're planning to try it so that would be interesting to see uh and now comes the very interesting part, which is the swag giveaway. Usually how I do it uh, is basically I share the Google form link and people just fill it and I ask the random numbers from the speaker and we do it. But today uh, it, it is totally different. Uh, so as of now, uh, you have to uh, type, I want teleport swag in the chat and first five people uh, coming up in my comment section will be the winners, <laughs> as simple as that. So make sure you are typing fast right now. <laughs> So let's see, let's see who are the five people who will be typing fast. I would do it, but I've already got some. <laughs> so you have to write, I want teleport swag. We have two already. So first is uh, Kishore. Second is Kedarnath. Okay, now we are getting third is Balaji, fourth is Ankur, and fifth is Suman. So cool. I mean, uh, I know everybody wants teleport swag who doesn't want that. Uh, obviously, you are coming here for learning and you are enjoying the swag as well. So that's the fun of the streams. Uh, but yeah. So thank you all for tuning in and uh, I'll be sharing your contact information. Yeah, please, uh, who are the winners? Uh, send me your email because we, I haven't done it by Google form. So I don't have your contact information. So all of the names that I have just spoken, please send me your email IDs on my Twitter because my DMs are open. You can send me and then uh, you will be, uh, you know, I'll be handing your information to the teleport team and they'll be reaching out to you uh, for the swags. So uh, make sure to send those uh, details to me because I really do not have them handy. So uh, make sure all the winners who have, have just announced, uh, send me those details. Uh, yes, uh, uh, congratulations to everyone and hope you will try teleport and let us know how, how did you try it because I'm definitely going to try it and uh, let you know the experience. I actually have tried it a lot, but still I'll try to see if any other use cases come up and I'll, I'll try to fit in over there. Uh, but yeah, I'll be working on the SIBO integration uh, for teleport. So uh, that, that would be interesting uh, to do. And uh, if you have not subscribed to the channel, please do, because that motivates me to keep on doing more stuff. And uh, there is a lot of things that, that, that are getting planned for July as well. So if you think June was great, then June uh, July will be amazing. So make sure you subscribe to the channel and uh, keep learning. And uh, yeah, see you tomorrow. Not tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday and Sunday. So uh, we will we'll let you relax for the weekends. So see you on Monday with uh, another new stream, another new episode, and uh, we'll have lots of fun then as well. And thank you, Trent, for spending time, uh, your evening with us and explaining about teleport, very neat demos. I really like the like the story, uh, story thing that you have brought. It, I, it's, it's, you know, it's very good uh, that, that you have a storyline and we are explaining that the demo and the product. So I, I really like that concept and I hope the, the community would agree to that as well. So thank you so much for spending time and explaining us about teleport. I'm sure people are going to try it and uh, uh, all love from uh, the community to teleport. Thank you very much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Okay. Uh, see you all. Bye. Take care.